Unit 2 video, or I'm sorry, Unit 12, video number two, uh, talking about market structures. Um, be able to differentiate between the different market structures as best you can. Uh, if I give you a characteristics, be able to identify the structure. If I give you a structure, be able to identify some characteristics of it. You should be pretty in good shape if you know that. Well, there are not a ton of questions on this, but, but a few, uh, so it's important to know. All right, so let's go through it. I break it down into basically five different sections, although there's a little bit of overlap between them. We have our continuum here. Perfectly competitive is the, the most pure, the most free of the market structures. Then monopolistic competition, oligopoly, and then finally monopoly, which is just one market. There's no competition in there at all. So let's dive in. Perfectly competitive uh, has a very, very large number of sellers. Uh, this is because there's an identical product, right? And so there's really no barriers to enter or exit. So if people demand this product, then people like you and me can uh, profit from it. And so there are going to be a whole lot of people that provide that product for the marketplace. So a ton of them, but normally those firms are very, very small. You can think of the amount of people selling, um, I don't know, lettuce at farmer's markets across the United States. It's probably an astronomical number because it's relatively easy to farm lettuce. You don't have to have FDA approvals or anything like that in order to sell at a farmer's market. They're all very, very small. They're all making very little profit, but pretty much an equal share of the demand, uh, depending on where they're located. So that's the idea of a perfectly competitive a ton of small uh, small businesses uh, all selling the exact same product. No barriers to enter, or they can shut it down whenever they want. All right, monopolistic competition. There's also a pretty large number. They can be very large businesses like McDonald's or a relatively small businesses like um, What's that? The Cane's uh, chicken place. I don't know. I just had it the other day. Raising Cane's, that's what it's called. Um, right? So there, there are different sizes. A uh, pretty large number of sellers, though. Uh, this isn't really a defining characteristic of a monopolistic competition. Uh, oligopoly is just a few, right? So uh, what they mean by a few is less than 10. Um, and these businesses are very, very large and make up the entire market collectively together. So a few very large firms, think of like Apple and Samsung and I don't know who else is Huawei or whoever else is making uh, phones. Um, that's not quite those two big heavy hitters. That's an oligopoly. And the monopoly uh, has one firm, right? Just one. Uh, if it has more than one firm, it's an oligopoly. So one firm, the firm is the market. Uh, barriers to entry. What we mean by barriers to entry are things like uh, cost. Uh, so if, you know, the economies of scale of, of some of these very, very large firms um, are so uh, such an incredible advantage, then other firms can't enter the market and compete with them because, you know, it's like a mom and pop shop trying to compete with Walmart. They're not going to be able to sell milk for the same low price as Walmart is because of Walmart's mass production uh, techniques and specialization that they can do. That's the idea, right? Um, other barriers of entry can be legal barriers of entry, uh, government regulations, things of that nature. Um, so in a perfectly competitive uh, marketplace, there are virtually no barriers. To entry. Uh, firms can enter and exit as they please. Uh, you don't have to, uh, it's not hard to compete. Uh, the costs are relatively constant depending on who you are. Um, and it's, it's not difficult to get your slice of that of a real pie. A monopolistic competition, there are a few barriers to entry. It's harder than perfectly competitive. Um, think of like starting your own fast food restaurant or even just your own restaurant. It's more difficult. You have to get some approval, some government regulation. Um, but it's a lot easier than, say, starting your own uh, jumbo jet um, travel uh, you know, company, <laughs> airliner. Right? That's a lot more difficult. So there are a few barriers to entry. It's, it's not as easy as a perfectly competitive, but not as hard as an oligopoly or monopoly. And oligopoly is very, very high. Um, normally, it's very difficult for new competition to enter the market unless they have some sort of strategic technological advantage uh, that the other ones don't. Um, so, for example, oligopoly of cable, um, cable television has been uh, pretty limited to just a few players for a really long time. But with uh, Hulu and Netflix have started to break into that marketplace and even YouTube now uh, because they're taking advantage of streaming services and the fact that people watch TV on their phones. Uh, more frequently than sitting on their couch and watching on their TVs, right? So uh, very high barriers of entry, but it's still possible to encroach on that and start to become a main player. So that's oligopoly. Monopoly, they have really high barriers to entry. In fact, it's virtually impossible to enter the market and compete. 
against them, that's what makes them a monopoly. Nobody can enter the market and put up a decent fight, right? So astronomically high, normally because they have technological advantages, they have mass production techniques and specialization techniques that keep their costs super, super low. Um, and then they also, they start to own all of the different um, stages of production. So they own their own resources. So uh, how are you going to compete with the beers when you have to, you know, make your own diamond mines? They own all the diamond mines in the world. You can't really compete unless you just happen to dig somewhere and find a, a new diamond mine that isn't owned by the beers. And even then you only have one to their hundreds of thousands of mines, right? So it's very, very difficult to compete for all of those reasons. Okay, uh, how about their products? For the perfectly competitive products are 100% identical. There's no differentiating at all. Uh, this is why there really aren't any true perfectly competitive markets out there because everybody, there's advantage to differentiating. I want more than my fair share of this. So if I tweak, if I differentiate a little bit, if I sell organic potatoes, right? Then I'm more likely to get a larger slice of that pie. So there's an incentive to differentiate and become monopolistic competition. But uh, by from economic terms or perspective, in order to be perfectly competitive, they have to be perfectly identical products, nothing differentiating any of them. Um, yours are no better than anyone else that is selling them. A monopolistic competition, uh, they are similar products, right? They satisfy utility in a similar way, uh, like cereal in a cereal aisle. All of them are breakfast foods. That can be consumed in the morning. Well, really can be consumed anytime, but are designed to be consumed in the morning, right? So very similar, but every single one of those cereal boxes is differentiated in some way. Some are more sugary, some are healthier, some are organic, some are, you know, just a pile of cookies you pour into a bowl, right? All kinds of different things that they could possibly be similar, but differentiated. Then oligopoly can be either or. It can be identical. It can be differentiated. Really, this isn't a defining characteristics for an oligopoly. Some oligopolies, um, like the oligopolies that provide Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, are providing an identical product. Wi-Fi operates uh, for my computer just like it would for for your computer. Uh, maybe very slight differentiation, but a lot of it are, is is identical, right? And those are oligopolies like AT and T and Verizon and whatnot, right? Um, or they can be differentiated, and oftentimes they try to differentiate themselves, even though they're offering a pretty similar thing. We see this with like Verizon and AT&T all the time, right? And that competition say, look, Verizon has uh, a greater uh, reach. We have better service area. Here's our service map versus the T-Mobile service map or the Trent service map. We're better, right? But really, it's an identical product that's being um, served there. Then finally, the monopoly. There are no substitutes. It's a perfectly unique good. That's what makes it a monopoly. Nobody can go anywhere else to satisfy their utility in the same way. Okay, price. For a perfectly competitive firm, they're price takers. They have no control over the price because they sell an absolutely identical product. So they can't determine what the price is. They have to sell it for whatever the industry determines, which is why our, uh, our demand and price are equal uh, in the perfectly competitive graph. Uh, for the monopolistic competition, they have some control over price, but they can differentiate a little bit, right? So I can't sell my tacos for $30 a taco, um, but I can sell them for like $4 a taco, if the, even if the cheeseburger across the street is only being sold for $1, right? Because it's different, I can justify a slightly different price range, uh, but still I have to pay attention to my competitors there. An oligopoly, they're interdependent on price. If one firm raises a price, all firms raise their price. If one firm lowers their price, all firms lower their price, right? So they're very interconnected. They have no control over their price, in fact, as a result. Uh, we'll talk later later on what it means to lead. Some of these oligopolies have a defined leader who leads the way and everybody else follows. We'll talk about that later. All right, monopoly or price makers. Uh, they get to determine whatever the price is. The only... Uh, containment of that price is demand, right? If people are willing to pay that high of a price. Um, so they still have to make sure that it, you know, is connected with quantity and demand and they're still slaves to the law of demand, just like every other firm. But because they have no competition, they can sell it for the absolute maximum price, um, even if the profit maximizing price is lower. Okay, advertising, final one. Uh, for advertising, perfectly competitive has very little to no advertising. There's no reason to. I sell the exact same product as everybody else. Um, so as long as I'm in that marketplace, I'm going to get equal profit. 
Um, but when we have monopolistic competition, there's a ton, right? I have to differentiate. I have to say, hey, here's why you should go to Taco Bell rather than McDonald's or Burger King, right? Or here's why you should um, buy this cereal instead of this cereal. And here's why you should get this real estate agent instead of this real estate agent, right? Trying to uh, identify the differentiation that's occurring there. So tons and tons of advertising as a result. And then oligopoly uh, depends. If the other firms are all advertising, then I'll probably advertise as well. If other firms are not advertising, I won't advertise. Again, interdependent with those other major firms. What are they doing? Pay attention to them and then come up with a strategy of your own. And then finally, monopolies have very little incentive to advertise outside of trying to raise the demand overall for the product they're selling. Uh, they have no real incentive to advertise because they don't need to differentiate from anyone else. They're the only one, only game in town. All right, so those are the major characteristics of all four of our market structures. Know those and you should be in pretty good shape.